Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to CSB Bank Q2 FY24 earnings conference call hosted by Yes Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the lesson only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Shivaji Thapliyal from Yes Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Enzo. Uh, good evening and a warm welcome to all those who have joined the call. Uh, the CSB Bank Management is represented by Mr. Palai Mondal, Managing Director and CEO. Mr. B.K. Devakara, Head Strategy and Corporate Legal, and Mr. Satish Gundeva, Chief Financial Officer. We specifically thank the management of CSB Bank for giving Yes Securities the opportunity to host their result call. The management will first be making some opening remarks, after which we will throw the floor open for questions. I now invite uh, the management to make their opening remarks. Dale, over to you. Thank you, Shivaji, and uh, thank you everybody for joining the uh, CSB Q2 earnings call. Uh, and I would like to also wish everybody a very happy Navaratri, and today the Durga Puja is starting, so uh, happy Durga Puja to also. To make things a little more brighter, there is a lot of sound in the background. I think people are celebrating Navaratri, so uh, hope it doesn't disturb uh, while we are talking. Please bear with us because there is a lot of background music happening around. Uh, coming to our uh, 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 today's uh, call, first I will start with a little bit of a macro on the global scenario and domestic scenario, and then I will quickly move to CSD specifics, and I'll keep it short so that we can spend more time on the call in terms of Q&A. On the global side, uh, while the inflation had shown signs of moderation, the economic data continues to remain strong, leading to the prospects of current rate cycle staying higher for longer. With escalation in geopolitical risks, oil remains in 90s as a result. With high interest rates and higher commodity prices, global growth is forecasted to get slower from 3.5% in 2022 to 3.0% in 2023 and 2.9% 2 in 2024. On the domestic side, uh, in contrast to the global trends, uh, the economic activities exhibits resilience on the back of strong domestic demand. With the start of busy festival season, the demand for currency with public is likely to remain strong. RBI has projected the growth at 6.5% for the year and the commitment to bring inflation to 4%. Added to that, the volatility of the global factors like rates, currencies, and commodities, the liquidity in the system is likely to remain in deficit. Uh, also, uh, the currencies are in circulation is expected to be slightly higher, and in view of that, now we expect the uh, liquidity challenges as well as uh, the, the deposit rates to remain a little elevated in the system for a while. Coming to CSB specifics, overall performance on both top line and bottom line was good on a YOI basis. Highlights of the performances are improved profitability with net profit of 265 crores for H1 FY24, up by 13% from H1 FY23. Q2 FY24 pack at 133 crores, 10% increase over Q2 FY23. Operating profit witnessed a growth of 14% on a half yearly YOI basis. Q2 FY24 is up by 11% over Q2 FY23. Provisioning buffer of more than uh, 170 crores over and above the regulatory requirements. And despite the margins are under pressure, uh, for most of the banks in a highly volatile market, we could maintain a mean of 5.12% for the half year ended, 39.23. For Q2, it is tad lower at 4.84. However, I'm confident that our mean has bottomed out in this quarter. And as per our plan, we should be able to report a mean higher than 5% on a full year basis. 
On a sequential basis, while cost of deposits increased from 5% to 5.22%, yield on advances declined from 11.18 to 10.88%, we are though confident that we should be able to address this decline in the coming quarters. Held the ROA of 1.76% for H1 FY24 and 1.73% for Q2 FY24 annualized. On the liability side, I think uh, we have a improving uh, the funding base, deposit growth of 21% YOY as against the industry growth of around 13% and CASA growth of 4% uh, YOY for CSD. On the asset side, the net advance growth of 27% YOY, industry has grown by around 15% YOY if we uh, don't consider the HFC margin. Gold loan uh, portfolio register of growth of 32% YOY, portfolio buildup happened across all the sectors. Now we have more balanced growth trends across all the franchise, be it retail, gold, SME, and wholesale, and which will sustain now and actually grow. Yields on advances for H1 FY24 is at 11.404%, with an improvement of 34 basis points from H1 FY23. On the asset quality matrices, I think we have some good news. Stable asset quality with GNP of 1.27%, NNP of 0.33, PCR of 75% without write-off, uh, and 92% with uh, technical provisions, uh, prudential provisioning policy in excess of RBI requirements, SR portfolio is fully provided, uh, which we communicated before. On the uh, capital base, CRAR of 23.96%, 96%, percent, almost 20%. Uh, low proportion of risk weighted assets compared to the industry. Shareholder uh, on the shareholder valuation, our intent is to maximize the wealth of shareholders fructified with attractive EPS, book value per share, ROA, and ROE. Book value per share has reached rupees 191, which is called consistent growth quarter on quarter. Uh, EPS of H1 FY24 is 30.51, ROE of 17.08 in H1. In conclusion, I'd like to say that our endeavor has always been to deliver consistently uh, and create a compounding growth story. The quarter one by is no exception. We have done well in both top line and bottom line parameters. On the top line, wild advances and the deposits grew by uh, uh, 15 and 13 percent YOY in the industry. Our growth is higher by more than 50 percent at 27 percent and 21 percent respectively. And this is what I told in my previous call also, that our endeavor is to grow 50% faster than the system. Gold loan portfolio grew by more than 30% YOY. Due to systemic liquidity challenges, deposit growth has come at a slightly elevated cost, and CASA growth has remained muted, uh, which is true for the industry as well. As communicated earlier, our cost to income has remained elevated due to significant investments we are making. As this investment starts paying back in terms of operating leverage, our cost to income ratio will start tapering for FY25 and should go down below 50% by FY30. On the uh, other front, we are taking rapid strides in strengthening the building blocks that will help us in leveraging our full service banking license and build a 360 degree pan India franchise across wholesale. SME, retail, and gold loan business. Our primary focus is to build a solid liability franchise by acquiring quality customers and onboarding them with all banking products and services. We are significantly investing in leadership, people, distribution products, while transforming the technology stack to provide our valued customer uh, our good service and a 360 degree banking facility. So in short, uh, I would like to say that while every quarter we will deliver the numbers what we're delivering, but the bigger picture for us is SBS vegetative vision and how we are sustainably and consistently moving towards that vision step by step. And so far, we are completely on track to service the milestones we have set for ourselves. With that, I stop here and I'll welcome questions. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets 
while asking your question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Mona Ketan from Dulat Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir, good evening. Uh, so my first question is around the yield on advances, uh, which uh, sequentially declined by 30 bits. So is it uh, to do with the rise in gold NPA and the related interest reversal? So Mona, uh, uh, you have uh, asked the right question that yield has uh, come down a little bit and that is primarily because of gold loans. So um, what we did is, I'll tell you, uh, last quarter, you'd know that the gold prices had started dropping, okay? And uh, and uh, being a very risk averse kind of a person, what I told our uh, gold loan business team is uh, wherever we have, generally the yields are higher where the uh, uh, you know, LTV is also higher. So as prices are coming down, uh, I just wanted to take some of these uh, 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 some of these customers offer our books and we gave that option for exit option for these customers and various ways this can be done so you use the process is generally what we all know and in the process a lot of these high link high LTV customers uh, had moved out of, 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 of our book in a way you can also describe them that way you described not necessarily NPHS not NPA it's also customers who are uh, getting at a LTV which is higher than our comfort level, and hence we uh, exited out of those relationships. Given that perspective, uh, uh, our overall portfolio uh, looked very good in terms of risk parameters, and uh, uh, but after that, because of the Israel crisis and things like that, global crisis, uh, uh, gold prices has gone up again. And hence, now it is looking like a very, very risk-free kind of a portfolio. And also, we are adding more businesses. But again, I'm very careful because, uh, you know, uh, this gold prices, how long it will remain high given that uh, global uh, U.S. 10 year is almost 5%, uh, uh, dollar index is where it is, uh, our, our bond is also high in India. So given all these perspectives, I'm just not uh, willing to take that kind of a bet, saying that let's uh, go all out and uh, book this business at this kind of a price. We are being very, very cautious and conscious on this business. So that's a, that's a combination of two, three factors uh, why uh, you are seeing what you're seeing. But uh, I think it's a, it's a, it's a risk uh, uh, averse kind of a, uh, mindset which made us do this because I always say that Risk come first, and after that, profitability and yields. Having said that, I must say that this is a kind of a one-time kind of a situation. Uh, we uh, uh, don't see the, and, uh, you know, we have bottomed out on NIM, which I just said, and our overall uh, half yearly NIM is around 5.12 or somewhere like that. And I don't see us, um, and I, I, I think that what we had committed before that will be about five percent for the year, we should be able to hold on to that commitment. Sure. So while you're saying that you let some of the higher LTV LTV portfolio go and also uh, high yielding portfolio go, if I look at your uh, you know reported LTVs and weighted average yields of the portfolio on the presentation. Uh, both of these have increased. Uh, the LTV is at 81% for the book, and uh, the weighted average yields are at 11.7. So, what explains that? No, no. Weighted average yields. Where did you get 11.7? Our uh, yields in uh, gold loans has come down uh, uh, this quarter, right? Uh, I don't know where did you get this 11.7. So, I'm okay. referring to the uh, uh, presentation on slide. Um, Oh, this one. Okay, okay. okay. But right. I'll, tell you, uh, I'll tell you the yields on gold loan has come down by around 20 30 basis points for us. Okay. okay. Uh, 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 I'll tell you the number. It was 11.78 last quarter, and uh, this quarter we are 10.99, around 
So we have uh, uh, got our yield down in bold on, and it will again go up. Immediately, this quarter it will go up. So our uh, yields have come down by around 70 basis points in bold on this quarter, and this is exactly the reason why I'm saying what I'm saying. And uh, on the uh, LTV, as you rightly said, if you do a little more detailed calculation and see that what our yield was and uh, what uh, uh, what our mix was, I mean uh, mix was, and what our mix is right now in terms of LTV, and then uh, um, uh, uh, kind of a compare it with the uh, gold prices which dropped, you will see that we have got rid of a uh, lot of uh, higher LTV book from the bank. Okay. Okay, so basically this 11.7 .7 number is incorrect on slide 12 of your presentation. No, so what happens, uh, Mona, is that uh, that is a half yearly number. We are talking about what Pranay is talking about is a Q2 FY24 okay. number, which is 10, 11%. So on a regular okay. in our Q1, our yield was pretty healthy. Uh, and so an average of that is what is... Uh, shown so, so whatever has changed has changed in Q2, right? Because you know that the gold price has dropped in second half of Q2. Okay. okay. Uh, so, so when you look at H1, it might be that number is correct. But when you look at uh, quarter on quarter, which I have in front of me, uh, it has come down by uh, 70 basis points. 70 bits. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 79 bits, actually. 79 bits, yeah. So, but okay. this is again, I'm telling you, this will again go up this quarter. So, we that's why I'm not so worried on the uh, name and the uh, gold on yields because this is a tactical decision we took, which has been taken care of. Sir, this 11.70, whatever we have stated in the investor's presentation, is carrying yield. So, that is why that has been at 11.70, it's uh, reckoned against the outstanding balance. Sure, sure. Got that. Got that. So it pertains to the full uh, H1 of the... Uh, yeah, 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 that's right. Okay. Uh, now my second question then is around the margins. While you said that you'll be able to maintain that 5% uh, 5, 5 or so for the full year. So uh, in that case, we expect essentially that the margin should rise year on. So that's when I said that we have bottomed our margins. Obviously, cost of funds uh, is sort of flattening, but uh, we still don't know if there is some more increase on the cost of funds. But we believe that our yield uh, expansion, in spite of mix, uh, mix going up now on the retail, on the SME, on the wholesale side, things are starting to improve. Uh, you will see that our increase in yields will be higher than the increase in cost of funds. And hence, our mean will be higher than what it is today. So eventually, we will be able to manage our mean in line with what we had guided, which is our 5% for the whole year. Got it. And just one final question. On the non-interest income, uh, there is the 60 crore of other income. Uh, what does that pertain to? And uh, yeah, and, and, and just again on this part, if I look at the other income X of Treasury, uh, it's almost, uh, you know, 1.9% uh, of your assets, which is close to what some of the large banks are making. So uh, is it fair to assume that, uh, you know, other income growth will slow down uh, uh, incrementally? So uh, if you remember, Mona, where I said before that one of the critical focus areas for the bank was uh, uh, sustainable fee business in the bank. And a uh, few years back, we used to be below 5% X Treasury and X PSLC. And you must, uh, you must have noticed that this quarter also, like last quarter, we didn't take any PSLC income. Uh, so given this perspective, you can assume that Whatever fee businesses we are showing are franchise fee businesses and hence sustainable and will continue to grow. I, I, I mean, the ratio may be right now around 17, 18% ratio may come down or go up a little bit here and there. But broadly, our uh, fee, fee income will continue to sustain in line with the balance sheet growth right now. Because a lot of these are processing fees, insurance related businesses, other franchise PFX, all of these things have started picking up. We have put a lot of effort around it, and it is starting to show results, and it will sustain. There is no one-off in this at all. 
In fact, one of them has not come. PSLC has not come. Right. Got it. And just finally, what is the 60 crore in the uh, non-interest income, the other income part? Uh, it could be in including some of the insurance, uh, insurance income, uh, liability income, uh, some of the credit cards, as you know, that we have uh, started enhancing our book on the credit card side, uh, which we do it with our partnerships. So could be some of these incomes. So it's a combination of a host lot of granular, uh, sustainable compounding growth kind of income. Sure, sir. Thank you. I'll come back in the queue. That was useful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pallavi Deshpande from Samitra Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you for taking my question. Just wanted to understand on the deposit growth. Uh, that was it was quite heavy, but just uh, the LCR has declined, and so do we see that? You know, do we see a situation where this uh, limits our uh, loan growth going ahead? Uh, the LCR regulation of hundred percent. So, Valerie, uh, thanks for your question. Uh, so, deposit uh, growth is right now in a systemic challenge right now in the, in the ecosystem. Though we have grown at 21% on a very small balance sheet with service overall growth of 12 to 13% in the system. But this growth has to be managed with three, four uh, ratios in consideration. One is NSFR, one is LCR, one is CD ratio, one is uh, uh, CASA ratio and one is cost of funds. Okay, so there are five balls in the air constantly when we look at our uh, deposit growth, and uh, the deposit also has a certain amount of increase coming from CDs, uh, certain amount of refinance, uh, certain amount of uh, uh, deposits, and a slight increase on the CASA. So it's a combination of all these four. Coming to your question. Will LCR become a limiting factor? Answer is no, because we know structurally there are four or five things which uh, uh, leads to the LCR ratio, and we are monitoring. I myself monitor LCR. Satish also does it on a daily basis. So I don't see that becoming a limiting factor, but if systemic liquidity remains very, very tight, uh, we are also very clear that we don't want to increase our cost of funds beyond the point when we cannot uh, you know, we, we, as I said before, that I will not sacrifice growth for NIM, but at the same time, we also can't have a situation where we'll buy business, buy liability business. That will never do. To give you an example, uh, our val validation on that, our CASA or our SAR rates still are below 3%. Okay. Our effective SAR cost is well below 3%. Okay. So, which shows that we are not in the business of buying liability. We will continue to grow, and we are on a smaller balance sheet. We can do that. And as we create our overall franchise, there will be automatic growth on the liability side. So to that extent, yes, when our CD ratio is almost 87.5 or somewhere like that, uh, we also have to have our deposit growth, which is closer to the asset growth, and we'll sustain that. And hence, you're right, deposit growth will decide our asset growth as well. So uh, just taking that one step forward, uh, so the loan growth, uh, we will be maintaining the CD ratio here now. Is that what we're saying? Then? Yes, yes. I've said that we will keep our CD, we'll try to keep our CD ratio uh, within 90%. We have been able to do that so far, and we hope that we'll be able to maintain that. Right, sir. Thank you. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one on your touchstone telephone to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Vikas Kasturi from Focus Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello, sir. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, congratulations on, uh, on a fantastic uh, half year. Uh, sir, my question is um, more to do with the industry. Uh, if you could just help uh, paint the picture for me. Um, so uh, we hear that even some of the large banks like HDFC Bank is adding a lot of branches and uh, trying to uh, get more of the retail business. And so is another bank like IDFC Bank and so on. So in such a situation, could you just tell us sir, how, how, what is the kind of competition that you're seeing uh, in the segments that you are operating like SME, wholesale, and even retail? So how is the competition and how are we 
uh, are we targeting a different uh, set of customers than these other banks? Could you just help paint the picture for me, sir? Sure, uh, sure. Thank you very much for the question. So, yes, I think the larger banks, see, uh, I have said it before, uh, a bank like HDFC is creating one CSV in how many days in a year, I don't know. So, uh, we, are, we really are not competing with such large banks. Uh, but there is always uh, a sweet spot for everybody if they know how to execute the uh, strategy. And that's how all big banks has also become big. You know, they are not big day one. People have become big over a period of time. So every uh, bank has uh, started like this and then gradually started playing the mainstream. Uh, for us, the first principle is, which is our board guidance as well as our management philosophy, is that uh, we are in the business of taking risk, but we are in the business of bringing the money back of the risk we take. So anywhere we have any doubt that we will not be able to get the money back, we don't do that business. So basically, net net, what it means is we are extremely risk averse to, uh, to point number one. And anywhere we see a risk, we don't do that business, as simple as that. B is uh, our balance sheet size is small, our opportunities are also small, but within that balance sheet size, a percentage growth, there is enough scope. India, the kind of distribution, the kind of opportunities which are there, everywhere a HDFC or a SBI or a, uh, you know, Coca or Access cannot reach, right, all the time. So there is always be a scope, and we have to be at the right place at the right time, and hence we have to find our sweet spots. That's what we're doing. Third point is uh, branch distribution. Yes, there is branch distribution, which I always said is going to be key for banking in India. And finally, I think uh, there's a realization that between digital and physical, both are very important. Digital augments physical distribution. That's why I fundamentally believe that uh, branch distribution is required, especially as you go into deeper geography. And in the main markets, even for wealth management, all those businesses you need because you're asking an uh, industry question, we're not into wealth management ourselves, but I've done that business before. You need that kind of a presence in, in uh, metro markets. And as you go deeper into deeper geography, the Bharat banking, whichever you call it, microfinance or uh, agri kind of businesses, you need your distribution. So we are, uh, we are not doing niche, niche in terms of products. We will do everything. But we will be finding our sweet spots where we think that we can give the right service to the right customer and the customer uh, segment, which is probably not getting the kind of attention which they deserve in a larger bank and in those kind of banks, this is what we can give. So the number of walk-ins that happens in our branch is much lesser in some of the banks which you're talking about. And hence the personal attention we can give is probably much better. We may not have all the services today the way they can give, but some of the customers miss personal attention, which you can give better. So we are trying to find out which are the things which we can do much better. Uh, SME, for example, which are the industries, which are the kind of locations, what kind of uh, uh, solutions we can provide, which some of the larger banks may not have the time or the bandwidth because they're doing much larger businesses. So we are finding those. But what we don't do is we don't take any risk. And we are also elevating the quality of the portfolio on the liability side also. So our average balances are going up in our bank. The, on the acquisition side, the quality of acquisition is going up. And clearly, uh, our growth in value is faster than the uh, uh, growth in numbers, uh, numbers of accounts. So some of those parameters start showing up. We have built businesses like this in various banks before, so we know what to do. And so far, we are on track. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for that uh, uh, explanation. So I just have a specific question. Um, could you just uh, give me some example of the segments or the niches where you, you can operate, but a larger bank uh, would not find it profitable to operate? No, what happens, you know what, that um, having, see, we most of our management team here have worked in larger banks and a uh, fairly large portfolio they have handled. So we know that it's not a question of seg uh, segment, it's a question of, on location, it's a question of which customer gets what attention in which kind of a uh, bank. Because when you have a uh, much larger set of customers to address, okay, some of the customers may not get the attention which they will get in our kind of a bank because our branch managers or our relationship managers or our customer service officers are a little more focused. 
So when you look at a customer pyramid, I'll answer it in a very uh, different way. When you look at a customer pyramid, our customer pyramid is different to a customer pyramid of bank A, different to a bank B, different to a bank C. So, and FY25, our customer pyramid will be very different to what our customer pyramid will be FY27 and our customer pyramid will be in FY20, uh, FY30. So defining this pyramid is very important because if I pick up customer which is the higher end of the pyramid of HDFC Bank, he will never stay with me. Okay, so we are finding those sweet spots which are premium for me, but at the mid kind of a segment for any of these banks. And that is good enough for me to start with because then if I can do lifecycle banking with these customers, as we grow and build our kind of other products and services which we are doing, then it will help us. So, uh, and as I said before, that our core banking, we are just starting to implement uh, anytime next month onwards. And uh, LMS, LOS, all this, uh, uh, you know, API already is, is uh, uh, done for us. Uh, corporate net banking we have done. I mean, I'm just talking about the entire tech stack which you're building. Around it, the kind of products and services, transaction banking, uh, uh, SME, uh, 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 supply chain, CMS, we are uh, working on solutions, CMS. So a lot of these things which are doing, which eventually will attract the right set of customers to us. So uh, ultimately, I'll say that service, attention to retail, attention to customers, and being closer to customers is something which we can do, which maybe for this segment of customers, the bigger banks won't have the bandwidth to do. That's what we have chosen as a sweet spot. I got it, sir. Uh, uh, thank you again, sir. And if I may ask one more question, uh, sir. Uh, so as you are opening, more, um, let's say, hundred branches every year, um, uh, and you're going into geographies where uh, they may not be familiar with a, a CSB bank, uh, do you have to uh, raise the deposit rate uh, uh, to attract customers? I know you said that you will not buy liabilities, but my question is: um, to attract customers in new geographies, do you have to raise rates? I have, you know, in various organizations I've worked in, uh, whether it is Wipro, HDFC, uh, various, uh, in various products on both liability assets, etc. Yes, Bank was a slightly different story because the brand we created there as a 7% on the savings, uh, not that it was my strategy. I never believe in pricing as a way to attract a customer. Because then that's not the way to build a franchise. The only way to build, because if I give five, somebody else will give six, somebody else will give seven, they will go away. So I don't believe in pricing as a strategy. At the same time, uh, we have to be competitive in the market and hence we have to be at par with whom we are competing with. So we will not attract, if you look at our red chart, everything you will see principally, we do not believe either on the asset side or on the liability side to play the pricing game out there. Because in a sales situation, what happens is the sales guys gravitate towards the, naturally towards the um, uh, lowest, uh, lowest kind of a price or highest kind of a price, depending on you're talking about uh, liability and assets. And once you open it up to the sales channel, then there is no control. So I do not believe in pricing as a strategy. We will always believe in execution, service, products, uh, uh, delivery, all those kind of things is going to create our brand over a period of time. I don't think, I don't like pricing as a brand for the bank. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your detailed answers, sir. Thank you. I'll come back in a few. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Rubble from Ambit. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, I, um, you are audible? Yes, Rubble, you are audible. Yes, sir, you are audible. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity. My first question is, uh, eventually we saw growth uh, being driven by gold loans. Uh, what what then explains a 12% eventual growth in credit and its creative assets? Uh, no, can you can you just be a little louder? Risk weighted assets growth you are saying is it? Yes, I am saying that uh, credit risk weighted assets uh, grew by twelve percent sequentially, whereas the gold in the whereas the gold growth is being driven by gold loans primarily. 
So why is there a there is a sharp sharp thing in our view? So so if you look at it. uh uh while the mix has broadly remained the same uh gold loan has remained around 47% uh the mix has gone down slightly on the wholesale side has gone up slightly on the retail side on the mix side and uh, sme has almost remained the same so what it means is and if you look at the growth for the first time as i said before all the four segments have grown i think wholesale has grown by 17% uh, sme has grown by i think 22% if i remember it correctly uh, retail has probably grown by 30 40% and the gold loan has grown by 32% so to that extent for the first time some other businesses are going faster than the gold loan as well it's just that their uh, quantum is lower the base is lower that's why uh, still gold loan mix has not changed and as and when this quantum starts getting bigger and the momentum starts picking up you will see the gold loan mix fy25 onwards starting to go down so given this uh, this scenario and given that some of the risk weights on the sme and uh, on the uh, on the retail side is slightly higher there could have been some uh, risk weights uh, change in the, some basis points change could have happened on the uh on uh, 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 the overall uh, risk weights so this you want to add to that uh, uh probably if you see our uh, uh capital usage is very limited uh, because my rwa to my uh, uh assets is always in the range of 43 45% uh, so uh, year on year it, my balance sheet has grown by say 2100 or something uh, kind of goes year on year my risk weight will drop because my risk weight will grow little less on the no so and this income question is more on sequential basis what i'm saying is that uh, gold loan has got a yield of 0% and since the growth was primarily driven by gold loan why was there not even risk at the on sequential basis no 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 growth was not primarily driven by gold loans actually if you look at uh, our retail growth was faster than gold loans okay uh, 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 wholesale uh, sme growth was uh, almost similar to gold loans slightly lesser wholesale growth was also higher so uh, it's not driven primarily this is actually the first quarter where gold uh, b- b- gold loan didn't drive the growth as much gold loan grew by only uh, very close to gold loan growth was very close to the bank's growth uh, bank's growth right Okay, maybe, maybe I think about it. Sequentially, gold loan, sequentially, gold loan grew by 5%. Uh, SME uh, grew by 8%. Okay. Uh, retail grew by 10%. Then AGRI and MFI grew by 16%. No, 3%. 3%. What is this investment? investment. Okay. So, uh, if you look at it, gold loan was actually uh, lower than two or three products growth sequentially. So, the gold loan didn't grow sequentially that much. that's what the point i made in the first question is going to ask na that this quarter we took a conscious call of uh, not growing the gold loan as much because gold loan prices are going up and we actually exited lot of our gold loan which has slightly on the higher end side okay um and second question is uh, this is verification uh, so you said that uh, we have 170 crores of contingent provision is that true One seventy crores of continue. Oh, actually, I'll explain that. So before that, one more point I wanted to say before that we have around one hundred seventy, one hundred seventy-five crores of credit card uh, portfolio, which grew, which was one of the highest growing because our base was very small. That would have also eaten up some amount of risk weights out there, because some of these are unsecured credit, so uh, that could have eaten up. On this one seventy crores, what you are saying is that out of that one hundred seven crores. is uh, uh this thing uh the covid provision is to call it before now uh, we have co- co- uh, called it additional provision uh, then we have uh, an our uh, this thing uh, compared to regulatory uh, provisions our provisions are much higher we have given the breakup somewhere how it has come to 170 it is somewhere in our just see which slide but uh, so bulk of it is 107 crores which is the uh, 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 which is the covid provision which is to call it now it's additional provision uh, and then 
then others are basically incremental provision reserves what RBI uh, regulates. Based on that, we have overall 170. Out of that, I think tax uh, is 33% benefit. So overall, is around 133. So I th I'll tell you the breakout. Uh, MPA provision based on regula regulatory provision, this is our provision is 67 crores. Uh, others is 106 crores, which used to be before COVID provision. So total, this adds to 173 crores. So a net of tax, 43 crores, it comes to around 130 crores after tax tax impact. So this is the point you're talking about. Okay, and these 107 crore COVID provision, these are not earmarked away in each of the taxes. So what, what we have done is we have, um, uh, because COVID is gone, right? So what we have done is we have uh, uh, internally we have created a policy that these are earmarked against certain uh, accounts. And as and when those uh, accounts uh, uh, are gone, then we can uh, use this for something else. Because it's it's very easy to immediately take it into the PNL, but we somehow believe that we need to keep slightly higher provisions as a conservative process. That's why once the COVID was kind of, um, the risk was gone, uh, we didn't want to take it back into our PNL. We just wanted to keep this provision uh, into the system. That's why we have kept it. I mean, as per our strategy auditor's uh, approval, we have uh, taken it as other provisions. Uh, the second uh, third question was on uh, the reconciliation of cost of term deposit. So the reported cost of term deposit is 6.5 percent, uh, but if you see bank's website, then offering rate on one year and two year term deposit is just 5.5 percent. So why is there such a disconnect? I didn't fully get your question, but let I think I've got a flavor of what you're saying because there's some disturbance on your voice. So I'll, I'll tell you what is happening on term deposits. Most of the term deposits which are now coming, you know, uh, for one year kind of a term deposit, one year plus kind of a term, nothing is coming be below 7.5 and some are around 8 to 8.1 percentage. So uh, so that's where term deposit costs are definitely going up, which leads to our overall uh, 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 and, and, and also uh, deposits get repriced, right, based on, uh, based on various things. So uh, based on that, what you are seeing is cost of deposits, uh, term deposits has gone up to in uh, Q2 6.43. It was 6.21 in Q1. It was 5.93 in Q4, 5.24 in Q3, and Q2 it was 5.18. So overall, there is a 120 basis points increase, roughly 125 basis points increase in term deposits cost. So this is then divided into two parts. One is repricing, and one is incremental term deposits and we are growing term deposits by almost 30 percent so 30 percent growth is coming at a cost which is at least 200 basis points higher than what used to be there because what was coming at five percent that time 5.5 percent is coming now at 7.5 percent to eight percent so there is a 200 to 250 and i'm talking from the industry perspective that incremental term deposit cost compared to one year back is at least 200 percent more right so given that this is not our story this is the industry story and we are in the in, uh, and we are in the ecosystem, so naturally we are mirroring what is happening in the system. Okay, so would it be fair to assume that uh, uh, the cost of term deposit would peak for us at maybe seven percent or seven point two five percent? So there is another room of fifty to seventy basis point increase. See, nobody knows that, but my uh, belief is that uh, you know typically this is our franchise I am talking about. We have seen our renewals. Uh, uh, obviously, we are like every other bank does. We do special uh, buckets and things like that to ensure that uh, renewals do not get impacted. And our renewals are very high. Okay, so and they are coming at reasonable rates. Okay, it is higher because even that uh, uh, red charts are also higher. Normal red charts, not special charts itself, but they renew at the same tenors and they are granular. So to that extent, a lot of these deposits will renew at higher, but not at this kind of a high rates. And also, depending on where GSEC goes, 10-year GSEC and the liquidity situation goes, uh, in case uh, we see that uh, the, uh, the, 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 you know, the, by the end of this year, hopefully, 
if you see that uh, 10 year gsa gets closer to 7% 7.25 to uh, 7% somewhere in between then i don't see how this will significantly go up so by and large i think we are almost there maybe another 10 15 20 basis points uh, otherwise we are almost there in terms of uh, term deposit stocks is my view uh, also the yield curve is flattening right i mean the shorter end and the longer end that does not take the uh, deposit costs up what it does it creates volatility in the deposits okay but if eventually we think that the gsec is going to flatten to start tapering down after uh, this financial year then uh, that will not matter in terms of the deposit pricing so given all these logic i think unless the global situation changes and you know overall uh, the us gsec 10 year gsec goes from 5 to 6 or something like that i don't see this uh, uh, going up too much 7% is out of question okay. uh, can i ask one more question yes yes okay uh, So our LTV is at 81%, and if I compare this to other regional banks, they are operating at 65 to 67% LTV. So uh, I understand that we are focusing on gold, so we are taking slightly higher. But uh, compared to these, uh, but compared to other regional banks, this is significantly higher than what than where they are operating. So uh, any thoughts there? You are talking about gold loans. Yes, gold, gold and LTV. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I think the region which operate, which we operate in, I don't know who's operating at 60 or 65. I know most of them are 70% and above. Okay, and some are even higher than us. Okay, so and I track it. Uh, so uh, it is, it is not. I, I, I don't know how many people are at 60%. Having said that, it's a function of what is it? It's a function of what is the size of your agri portfolio. and what is the size of your uh, non agri portfolio because as per regulation non agri portfolio has to be below 75 and we are well below 75 out there and on agri also we have kept a limit of 85% okay we will not go beyond 85% in terms of ltv why you are seeing elevated the same 81 used to be 73 for me only uh, few one month back or two months back okay and that's the time we took the call of saying that we don't want to go beyond this so let's uh, uh, you know uh, uh, get some of this portfolio out of the system so uh, so given that perspective it's a question of uh, uh, and and now if i calculate my ltv will be much lower you know because the gold price are again gone up it's a sensitive analysis we want us to do given all this it's a function of how we are doing what is the agri portfolio agri portfolio also gives you psl see remember that you know so uh, and this gives a better earning and there is a lot of more rigor in that because you cannot just classify a agri without getting the right documentation without getting a scale of finance without getting a unit cost without getting the top cycle what are the documents you are getting against that there is a lot of operating cost in doing this business it's not easy just because we want to do more agri business that does not mean it just happens like that so because we have been in this business for a while we understand all this uh, i think uh, we are able to manage this much better this is a Uh, a very clear strategy for us and it gives us also benefits in terms of psl and other things and this is very helpful sir on the way thank you thank you very much thank you the next question is from the line of mr shivaji kapilal from yes securities over to you sir yes thank you so i have uh, you know one broad question and uh, you know perhaps uh, there are essentially four related uh, sub questions in that so uh, firstly uh, you know i wanted to understand the uh, perspective at the quality uh, you know evolution right now uh, the bank is you know gold loan focused so uh, credit costs are uh, obviously you know extremely low i mean it's they are next to nothing um but uh, just wanted to firstly understand uh, the slippages uh, in this particular cost quarter what was the segmental contribution i mean which segments they emerged from as number one and uh, uh what is the slippage guidance for the future and what is the credit cost guidance for the for the future basically uh, so that's that's one and also secondly uh, in terms of you know growth uh, 
um, you know, we are piloting a lot of uh, retail segments. So where are we on that and what will be the growth guidance as a consequence for FI24 and 25? Uh, thirdly, if you could comment on the yield of the businesses and fourthly uh, on the uh, OPEX, uh, you know, evolution as well. So, yeah, thanks. thanks. Thank, thanks, you. Very great set of questions. So let me uh, try and answer one by one, and I'd request Satish to add whatever he, uh, uh, you know, things he wants to add. So on the slippages, what uh, where we saw uh, mostly it is on the gold loan side, okay. And uh, other than that, it's broadly in line with uh, where uh, uh, it has been in the previous quarters. So uh, and and gold loan slippages eventually does not lead to. Uh, credit loss uh, based on our historic experience because eventually you have the metal with you and eventually you recover okay so to that extent our past experience says that it doesn't bother us too much uh, but broadly it, that's what it is the gold on uh, slippage was slightly higher than last quarter uh, uh, the second question is on overall NPA and uh, uh, how do you see the credit cost? I agree that we have a credit cost, negative 15 basis points credit cost this quarter also. I keep wondering how long will you on negative because this is not real. Uh, and in my previous com uh, commentary, I said that we'll be between 10 to 20 basis points this year uh, on the higher side. And uh, next year onwards, I've said that we are making it a 40 to 50 basis points credit cost when we are a full uh, franchise level. So I think that's what we have baked in into our PNL and in our projections to the FI2030. So long term, our thinking is that our gross will be below two, net will be below one, and credit cost will be between 40 to 50. That's our FI2030 guidance, and that we hold on to that. But I'm not complaining that we are 1.27 in gross and uh, 0.33 net and minus 0.15 in uh, uh, net uh, credit cost. Uh, but this is too good to be true. As the mix, business mix changes, it will mirror the business mix eventually. Coming to a question on uh, uh, segmental growth and OPEX cost and things like that, I'll take the OPEX cost first because that's very important. Uh, for us, I look at cost as cost and investment as two different items, but they finance, but Satish will take both as same because they both comes as a uh, uh, hit to the bottom line from a cost perspective. But the difference is cost is uh, something which is instantly gone and investment is something which will give us long-term returns. So large part of our cost to income growth or cost to income escalation is primarily happening because of three, four lines. One is technology. The largest investment is happening in technology. As I said before, in our bank, we almost have, we'll have nothing what we had three years back in technology. And we are taking the latest and one of the best technology in everything which you're doing. So, and technology will give us operating leverage and hence that will help us in reducing our cost to income over a period of time. Second part is leadership, people, distribution, uh, and processes, and uh, uh, kind of a real estate related to that, the distribution and uh, people. And there we are getting the best in the market to ensure that we can, the people who understand scaling of business, they are doing the business. So, uh, and hence these are investments we are making. Eventually it will pay off as the portfolio starts growing. Uh, so, and third, of course, cost, natural cost, the HF cost, and other things which will happen. The third angle on the people side is also we need customers. We don't have enough customers to build a sustainable long term liability franchise, and ultimately, a bank is more about liability than assets. So, uh, there we are investing significantly in terms of acquisition machinery, and we are building acquisition machinery out there. Uh, along with that, of course, we are also building things like contact centers, outbound contact centers, VRM channels, so many other things, you know, and these also include real estate and things like that. So that is something which are thinking like a bigger bank. We are small now, but we are thinking like a bigger bank and investing into this. Coming to your products, uh, as I said before, we are not looking at becoming a niche. We know we are small, but we are not niche. I'm very, very clear on this, okay? So we will be large and wholesale will be large, but wholesale is not the um, uh, corporate banking and all that, you know, large corporates. We'll be in the mid-market to emerging corporates because that's where we can play. The SME, we will be large. Uh, gold loan will continue to sustain because this is a good business to be in, but it cannot really scale that much because gold loan scaling 
at a 20 30000 uh, 20 30000 balance sheet you can but when you make it 2 lakh 50000 then gold loan cannot be obviously that kind of a scale right because it's not possible it's not a scalable business so to that extent scalable businesses are wholesale sme retail and these three will scale and gold will continue to sustain along the way and do its own other thing the fourth point which you didn't ask but i want to upfront it that on a strategic basis uh while we are saying that we will open 100 branches every year but i am thinking that if we make i mean lot of our branches are just doing only gold loans because of historic reasons okay actually we can make two branches of the same branch okay if we just because we are moving a lot of things centrally a uh, lot of operations is to happen in the branches etc so a lot of branches will get free in terms of real estate so if i just i can actually make two branches out of the same branch by making one part gold and one part other businesses okay so i have starting to think strategically on those uh, thinking and then without adding branches just adding some people uh, and adding some businesses once our product and technology is fully ready i can leverage my branches to almost 2x okay so that itself will also bring down my uh, oper- operating cost western cost to income none of this will happen overnight none of this happening next quarter but all this will happen at 2025 onwards and the blueprint is in play just waiting for the technology to deliver so that's broadly uh, the three four uh, responses to your question sir really. yeah uh, thank you but just uh, some uh, incremental numbers i mean uh, what would be uh, a the growth guidance for fy 24 and possibly 25 and what will be the cost to assets secondly uh, in 24 25 24 to 25 and um uh, i can you want to be talked about credit cost yeah i think these two numbers is the best yeah i will give you some perspective on uh, growth i have already said and i have been saying consistently banking is about consistency so i have been consistently saying that we will continue to grow 50% faster than the system on uh, asset side of course if we are able to build the liability franchise right the uh, but if our liability franchise cannot support that maybe we will go by 45% percent of the system or 40% percent of the system but i think we'll sustain at least for the next two years i can see easily 40 to 50% percent faster of the system so that's number one number two is on the uh, 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 what is the other question on the uh, op- opex to uh, assets right opex to assets is around 4. Point, how much right now 4.4.12 for this quarter it is high because of various reasons including gold loan has lot of good things but it also has high opex okay so and the fact that the lowest opex business wholesale i think we can leverage much more which will look at it okay uh, opex to assets will come down once our uh, sa business starts growing once our wholesale business go, uh, uh, starts growing that is also going to help our cost to income so and hence as and when those businesses start picking up our cost to assets will start coming down so uh, it's a fine balance between uh, how do you want to do uh, i'm not in a hurry right now from uh, 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 opex to assets uh, uh, because that is giving me uh, the highest return on the gold loan side uh, and also the last part i must say that opex to assets will come down once i have other franchise which allows you to cross sell multiple products to the same customer and start creating the semblance of wealth business we will take another 2 3 years to get into wealth business but once we are able to do that that's the time we will see that opex plus assets starts coming down because your people will be a lot more productive in the branches and and relationship management and all that so that will start happening but for that we need the technology and the products first and then it will happen so maybe it will not happen by fy 25 fy 25 one or that's why uh, i said before that my cost to income will start showing a glide path towards 50% and below only if i 25 onwards it's a very well planned and well uh, kind of a uh, articulated structure we have created for the next 7 years and so far we are on track on each of these thank you uh, for the that response thank you so much The next question is from the line of Mona Ketan from Dollar Capital. 
Yeah, hi, sir. Just to follow up, so uh, uh, can I have the interest reversal uh, from the interest income in Q2 and the previous quarter as well, which is Q1? Even I don't know that number. I don't track that number also. So what I don't track, how do we put it in public domain? Okay. Uh, so just uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, just digging a little bit more into the yield and LTV for the gold portfolio that we discussed earlier. Um, so while you're saying that the yields and LTV quoted in the PPT are that of H H1 uh, and not Q2 particularly, uh, still if I compare it with the last quarter, uh, yields have increased uh, from say. 11 11.64 to 11.7. So if this quarter yields have fallen so substantially, the average yield for H1 should have ideally declined. No? Why is it increasing? And similarly with LTV as well. No, no, I didn't understand. What, what is declined? Uh, I said that Q2, Q1 to Q2 yield has declined, right? Correct. But the PPT says it has increased. So even because if it the is... High, because the high yielding businesses we got rid of. No, that's what I said. Because they're high, uh, high LTV, we didn't keep them, or for various reasons, so wherever we didn't want to keep the, uh, some of the high yielding uh, uh, gold loans, uh, we didn't want. For example, some of the XB gold loans used to be high yielding, so we got rid of them. So we didn't want to do all that last quarter. Because I saw that as the, see, see I was worried that if gold, line, gold price falls further, okay, then we will get into a 90% kind of a, a bracket. So we didn't want to do that. I couldn't guess that the uh, gold prices will not fall anymore, no? so uh, who knew that there will be a, a geopolitical crisis, so that's mm -hmm. why Sure, but what I'm trying to understand is why are the data in the Q1 versus Q2 PPT not uh, reconciling with what you're saying, because uh, the yields are actually increasing, so is it fair to say that there's something incorrect with the data we have in the latest PPT? Where, where, is, where are you seeing this data, Mama? I'm seeing uh, so it. It's on slide 12. I'm on slide 12. Maybe there's a mistake. Okay, okay. So, similarly on growth as well, which is the portfolio. Let me, let me check. Which slide 12 you're talking about? What is the number? Uh, so, I'm seeing yields of 11.7 on gold loans and LTV of 81%. And last that quarter... A, that is a carrying yield, uh, Mona. There's a difference between a portfolio yield and a carrying yield. Okay. Carrying uh, yield, uh, portfolio yield is what is realized in your P&L already. Whereas carrying yield is what is the portfolio that I'm carrying today, what is the carrying yield of that. So is this, that is a more of a futuristic... Carrying yield is a little more futuristic. Portfolio yield is what is actually based in the numbers. So when you say carrying yield, does it mean incremental yield? that you're offering currently on average? So carrying yield uh, says that, you know, suppose I have uh, written a loan today, uh, say on 30th of September, okay? That wouldn't have given me any returns in my p because it's just a one day. But that, so it is the aggregation of all the loans which are there in my book. And what is the yield, uh, what is the customer yield that is mapped against each of these loans? That is the of the carrying yield. So it is what is I have already consumed in my p &L. Okay, so the yields you are quoting here in the PPT are not a reflection of the weighted average yields in your portfolio. That is a carrying yield. That's a very good one. This is a carrying yield. The portfolio yield is uh, 11 percent. Portfolio yield we already told that uh, on Q2 our gold loan yield was 10.99 percent. Q1 was about 11.78 percent. Okay. Okay. And can you uh, share the LTV uh, uh, like likewise? LTV, I think uh, currently it is 81 percent. Currently it will be lower, but uh, maybe quarter end it was around 80 percent. Yeah. So again, uh, uh, I mean, since you have given away some of the higher LTV portfolios, the LTV should ideally decline, right? But from Q1 to Q2, it's increasing from 77 to 81 percent. Maybe it's not an LTV issue, it's the higher yielding portfolio, which, uh, see, I, I am not looking at just LTV, I am looking at the portfolio, which we don't want to carry. Let me, okay, since you're asking that question, let me tell you. LTV 
is I'm just trying to guess. LTV could be uh, 75 to 80, 80 to 85, 85 to 90, 90 to 95, 95 to 100. Okay, it can be many. So which part of the uh, what I have discovered is where we got rid of, right? That does not bring down your LTV there. Wherever I have discomfort uh, and which kind of yield or which kind of uh, uh, portfolio I have discomfort, I have got rid of that. That's what I'm saying. So it doesn't matter. See, I may not have a problem with 80% LTV, but I may have a problem with a 95% LTV. Right. So if 95% you're doing away with, then your average portfolio LTV will ideally come down, right? Uh, something else could have come at 80, na? Okay, okay. Else could have come at 80. Because really, uh, this is, this is short-term businesses, na? So uh, these are typically, uh, so uh, uh, we can share that number with you. But that, uh, Mona, what has happened is that the gold loan as a portfolio is also increasing. Okay, so as I'm getting rid of a say, high, LTV, uh, high LTV kind of a portfolio, I'm also writing new assets. So, so we we write a lot of new assets in gold loan. It's a it's a it's a treadmill, you know, this uh, gold loan business. So constantly something is going out, constantly something is coming in. So what could have come in? Well, I'm just guessing it right now because I didn't do this level of analysis. So uh, as soon as you uh, get, uh, get new businesses, that could have come at 80 percent, no? Mm hmm. Sure, got that. But just a request, if on the yield side you could share the average portfolio LTV, that will be useful. Uh, secondly, I just wanted to double check on the, uh, you know, uh, segmental uh, loan book that you share across SME, gold, corporate and retail. So while you mentioned, yeah, yeah, just, just a, uh, you know, uh, just a reconciliation. So while you mentioned that SME has grown by 8% Q on Q, uh, the number, when I compare it with last quarter, it has actually degrown. So, um, is there some sort of, uh, you know, uh, 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 reconciliation in numbers or something? Or uh, where am I going wrong? Let me see. So, what you're saying is SME has grown. SME has uh, grown year on year by 22%. That's what I said. Correct. So... Uh, and and it is around uh, what 11 percent of the whole portfolio, right? 11 or 12 percent, something like that. So where you are getting 8 percent? Which one? Uh, so I I remember you having said that sequentially SME book has grown. Last quarter it was at 2572 as per your PPT, and this quarter is at 2377. So according to me, it has grown. Is that a fair understanding? Let me see which data you are talking about. Which page you are talking about? Uh, Ma'am, uh, you know, whatever that you have seen in the investor's presentation of last quarter, that is inclusive yes. of uh, prudential write-up also. This time we have corrected and we have shown the figures, net of prudential write-up. That correction has been done. That is why it is looking higher last quarter and uh, lower, this, lower this quarter. Actually, okay. that has been, uh, it is the net of prudential uh, write-up this year, this quarter. Okay, so can I have the SME number, just the SME number for last quarter, likewise, what we have this quarter? So, uh, so SME slash MSME last quarter was 2109, it is uh, 2282 currently, which is SME plus MSME. Okay, so 2109 versus the 2572. 2282, 2282, which is a uh, sequential growth of 8%. Sorry. I can see 2377 on your CPT. So I'm telling you SME slash MSME. So it's a uh, okay. number for national internet, including MSME. Okay. It so it's grown from 2109 to 2282. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 282, yeah. Sure, sure. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of Vikas Kasturi from Focus Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, sir, in, in the annual report, I read that uh, uh, CSB Bank would start offering uh, cash management services to its uh, uh, retail customers. So could you just uh, uh, throw some light on, uh, uh, you know, what would this do for the bank? You know, for example, would the 
uh, when I say retail, I mean the retail, the small uh, SME. Uh, so does it mean that those customers would be uh, would tend to bank more with uh, uh, our bank? And uh, what is the cost uh, that it, that we will incur in this business uh, by offering the service? So uh, the way I mean, all banks does it. So the way we're doing it is we are um, uh, uh, taking a software. Uh, which will help us in getting new customers also and offering uh, cash management services to our customers. It will help in two ways. It will help in getting more current account customers to the bank and effectively it helps us in creating flows and then opportunity to do SME business out there. And the reverse is also right that when we get and talk to SME customers, how SME customers are, uh, you know, uh, will, will uh, work more with the bank through all these solutions on the CMS and things like that. Uh, schools, uh, trusts, and all this. So uh, these are the solution-oriented approach which we are taking. So we have got a team who is working on this, and uh, this this will leverage uh, trust association task basically, and the SME customers both to build uh, basically to build solutions which will create flows, which will also on a uh, sustainable sustainable basis can help us getting not only current account but also savings account for some of the institutions as well, like schools and things like that, where you give the solutions. So those are the kind of things. We have done it in previous organizations also. We are going to implement here as well. And we have already started working on getting uh, uh, some solutions around it already. Right, sir. And uh, the logistics part is? Yes. Uh, I'm really sorry to interrupt you, sir, but due to time constraints, uh, you would have to ask your question later. Is that fine? Yeah, I, this is just one follow-up question, and I'll be done with it. Okay. Uh, uh, so, Pralay, sir, uh, my question was, uh, the logistics part is something that the bank would do itself, or is, it, is that going to be an outsourcer? Logistics means you're talking about uh, people who will be handling the cash. Yes, yes, movement of cash will be yeah. taking care of uh, the... So that, that, no, that will be outsourced, but the point is that that is a different kind of a cash management. That is a part of the cash management process, but we are talking about also cash management solutions. Okay. okay. One is okay. managing cash or handling cash. Uh, the second part is cash management solution, which is uh, more from a solutioning perspective, which is mostly digital and other things. So, uh, but if you are talking about pure handling of cash, obviously uh, that will be outsourced. All right, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for your all your detailed answers. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, the last question that we have is from the line of Jay Mundra from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, uh, good evening, sir, and thanks for the opportunity. I have one question only. So on your LTV, just wanted to check if you have any cap when you originate a loan or when you start uh, getting relationship on gold loan. Is there any cap on the LTV? And does this differ in retail and non-retail gold loan? Yeah. We don't have non-retail gold loan as, much, as such, but I'll, I'll explain you how it is. So cap, one is a regulatory cap, which is 75% for uh, non-agri gold loan. Obviously, we follow that no, uh, that norm. So uh, non-agri gold loan will always be 75% or below. For agri, we have sort of kept a cap uh, unless specifically approved by somebody uh, as per delegation matrix, around 85% cap on uh, every kind of a gold loan. Uh, coming to uh, 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 institutional, I don't know what you mean, but we do have some businesses where there are aggregators who also will have some, you know, uh, what in popular terms we will call bonus. Traditionally, there has been some business there as well, but that business is... Uh, uh, gradually declining in the bank right now. Okay, uh, understood, sir. And just on that, so uh, if a customer, let's say there is a 75% LTV uh, in their in your retail offering, does all the products are like 12 months bullet product, or you also have three months, six months, uh, which are you know which are we have we have we have, we have uh, all kinds of trainers. I also don't know in as much of detail, but. Uh, we have uh, 12 months, we have 6 months, that much I know. Whether we have 3 months or not, I'm not 100% sure. We can check that. But we have 6 months and 12 months products for sure. 3 months can be too high a cost to uh, do this uh, because then they'll keep coming back for renewals and all that. But I don't know, we may have, I don't know, I have to check that out. 
on the uh, LTV, as as you said, 75 percent and 95 percent. But what typically happens is, depending on the gold loan prices going up or down, okay, uh, effective LTV at any point of time for a person who came with 75 also can go up slightly. And then that's a question of conversation with the customer to how to regularize that. So those things keeps happening depending on the gold loan prices. Right. So, sir, for a 12 months retail gold loan product, what would be the LTV that you would start with, right? Because uh, if you add the interest of 10, 11 percent, oh, so we, we, we add interest when we uh, talk about LTV. Okay, this is not the loan given. That right? is including the interest. Yeah, yeah, including the interest. We are. LTV calculation is always including the interest. The customer in hand will be getting 10 percent lower. Lesser. Yeah, 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 lesser. Uh, he will get 10% lesser. Yeah, sure. Okay, understood, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. As there are no further questions from the participants, I now hand the conference over to Mr. Pralaya Mundal for the closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think we had a very good interaction and interesting set of questions. Uh, uh, and uh, it is good that some of this question also challenged us because we had to go back to the uh, numbers again and again and uh, give it um, back the answers. Hopefully, it could satisfy with our responses. Anybody who uh, still wants to speak to us, we'll be glad to talk to them on and on. Thank you very much for your uh, patient hearing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Mundu. On behalf of ES Securities that concludes this conference, thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you very much.